So we'll come back once again to quantum mechanics. So in the today's uh, session, we shall discuss about the concept of uh, Schrodinger wave equation. In turn, it is another subcategory of quantum mechanics called as wave mechanics. So this uh, similar to the concept of uncertainty relationship or matrix mechanics, what they are studied. This particular wave mechanics also has got uh, its own significance and its own application. So, uh, in this regard, first of all, we shall to understand what is Schrodinger wave equation or what is the uh, basic uh, need of developing the Schrodinger wave equation. So, first of all, uh, you consider that uh, whenever you are having a wave in a given system, it can be explained by using some equation. For example, if there is a simple harmonic wave, you can simply write the equation for it as y equal to a sin omega t representing the simple harmonic wave. In the same fashion, uh, for matter waves also, we are in need of some equation which can describe the nature of the matter wave. So, such a task is undertaken by Schrodinger and he has developed an equation for matter waves in fact, which is named as Schrodinger wave equation. So, we have uh, two different forms of, forms of the Schrodinger wave equation. One is the time dependent form of the wave equation, other one is time independent uh, form of the wave equation. So, what is the time dependent and time independent? See, every particle in space can be identified by two different coordinates. One is the one set of coordinates, the spatial coordinates or position coordinate, other is the time coordinate. For example, if I am having one particle in space, I can represent it by a coordinates x, y, z, comma, t. That x, y, z indicates the spatial or position coordinate and t represents the time coordinate. Therefore, in the Schrodinger wave equation, if you can develop the time dependent wave equation, then the final equation contains the time factor or time term. Whereas, we can also rewrite the Schrodinger wave equation at time independent form also. That means the final form should be free from the time uh, parameter. No? Then we call such an equation as time independent wave equation, where the time coordinate is suitably modified into position coordinate using the velocity of matter waves. This is the overall uh, gist of the Schrodinger wave equation. Now, in your syllabus, we are supposed to develop the time independent form of the wave equation that we shall think of. So, before going to the time independent Schrodinger wave equation, we shall have some various parameters. I will consider a particle having the mass m. It is made to move with a velocity v and it forms the matter waves of wavelength lambda. So, as per the de Broglie concept, as you know, a very moving particle is associated with a wave having a matter wave wavelength of lambda. So, we shall assume P as the linear momentum of the particle, E k the kinetic energy, capital V the potential energy and E the total energy. So, these uh, uh, basic physical quantities are associated with the given particle. Now, first of all, what we do, that is there are, we can write it in three different steps to make the uh, derivation simple. For the first part possible uh, write up, I will uh, rewrite the de Broglie wavelength in terms of total energy E. So, you know that de Broglie wavelength lambda is h over mv. It is the most fundamental form. It is also equal to h over p that you all know. Apart from that, you have got one more variety of equation 
which is given by lambda equal to h over root 2m into ev that is where v is the potential that is another type of representation third category is lambda equal to h over root 2m into ek that is in terms of kinetic energy but we don't have an equation representing the relationship between de broglie equivalent lambda with the total energy that we are going to establish now for that purpose the total energy of the particle is given by kinetic energy plus potential energy substitute that e is equal to half mv square as the kinetic energy component and capital v the potential energy component so we can rewrite that half mv square in terms of the linear momentum as p square by 2m plus that of v or from this equation by cross calculation we can find out linear momentum p is equal to square root of 2m into e minus v now rewrite our this section lambda now lambda is now equal to h over p replace that p with root 2m ev that will give you the required task that is lambda will be h over root 2m into e minus v so this gives us the relationship between wavelength de broglie wavelength lambda with that of the uh, total energy of the given particle of course it is e minus v is nothing but the kinetic energy already we have used over uh, this particular de broglie wavelength is represented in terms of total energy for our calculation so in the second part of the derivation we have to use the term called as wave function psi so uh, according to schrodinger there must be a wave function associated with the matter waves so wave function is one such parameter which always go together with the uh, matter waves in fact so uh, that can be represented by the equation psi is equal to Psi naught e to the power of i into k x minus omega t. This is one of the uh, equation that uh, Schrodinger has assumed, and the psi naught is a constant. Now, for this, find the first derivative d psi by d t that gives you the corresponding uh, calculation psi naught of minus i omega e to the power of i into k x minus omega t. similarly second derivative d square psi by dt square is equal to psi not i square of something since i square is minus 1 this finally leads to minus omega square psi so i am rewriting that uh, psi not e power of i into kx minus omega t as equal to psi okay this we shall call it as equation number 3 now for now partially you are at the wave equation in uh, stage in total so where d square psi by dt square is equal to minus omega square psi is the nearby relationship of the schrodinger equation however but what we want to do is we have to convert that time parameter into position coordinate now the third task is to convert the time coordinate to spatial coordinate or position coordinate so in this example i am considering the particle to move along only x axis therefore i am writing the equation in such a way that d square of base dx square is equal to 1 over v square d square by by dt square okay so in this particular case or this particular general equation d square by dx square is equal to 1 over v square d square by by dt square for the general equation for a propagating wave progressive wave okay so we are going to apply similar concept for the matter waves also thereby i can write d in place of y i can write as d square psi by dx square that should be equal to 1 over u square u happens to be the velocity of matter waves okay so that gives you the equation number 4 so from the so using equations 3 and 4 we can write u square d square psi by dx square is equal to minus omega square psi okay so or i can also write it as on taking the um, transformation of terms to one side we are having p square psi by dx square plus omega square by u square psi 
is equal to 0. So now you can substitute uh, omega is equal to pi nu. And you can say that uh, for every wave, the velocity of the wave is given by the product of frequency and wavelength. So applying the similar concept for the matter waves also, you can fight, you can write uh, u is equal to nu lambda. Substituting those results in the above equation, the equation modifies to d square psi by dx square plus 4 pi square by lambda square of psi is equal to 0. Now, you have to substitute the value of lambda from the equation 1. You are going to get this equation d square psi by dx square plus 8 pi square m into e minus b by h square of psi is equal to 0, which is called as the one dimensional equation which is framed by Schrodinger in the time independent forum. So, uh, at the same time, suppose if the particle is moving uh, all along the x, y, z direction, that is, it is moving in space, assume, then we can also write it as d square psi by dx square plus d square psi by dy square plus d square psi by dz square plus 8 pi square m into e minus v by h square of psi is equal to 0. This is called as Schrodinger time independent wave equation in three dimensional form. So let us see what is the significance of the wave function psi. So before that, uh, when if you observe the Schrodinger wave equation, that is uh, d square psi by dx square plus 8 pi square m into e minus v by h square of psi equal to 0. So in this particular equation, all the other physical quantities what you are, you are using, they are all known to us. But only one quantity is unknown, that is nothing but psi. Therefore, why there is a need of psi or why we have to use the importance of psi in this equation that we have to analyze in this particular study. You know that uh, whenever a wave propagates in a given medium, then there must be some physical quantity undergo modification. Say for example, if you take the sound waves propagating in a medium, it leads to the formation of alternate uh, compressions and rarefied regions. So in the compressed region, the pressure density will be high, volume will be low. In the rarefied region, reverse will happen. Therefore, countries along the propagation of the sound signal, there will be modification in the physical quantity like pressure, the density and the volume. Same thing if you apply it for a uh, water wave, ripples on water. You will see at the height of the water surface, continuously undergo fluctuation. Take the case of electromagnetic signal. There will be continuous modification in the electric field and the magnetic field. So, if you apply a similar analysis for the matter waves also, you will see that there must be some varying physical quantity. That variable parameter is nothing but the wave function psi. Although psi is one parameter reflecting the probability point of view, but we cannot use psi directly by or cannot measure psi directly using some experiments. It is because of the fact that the value, for example, if you take the probability point of view, probability of, a, of finding a particle in a given system, assume, so it can have a values between 0 to 1. 0 indicates no chance of finding the particle, 1 indicates 100% chance of finding a particle. Say if you find psi is equal to, I mean, if you find the probability is equal to around 0.5, then there is 50% chances of finding the particle in that way. But you cannot say the value of probability is minus 0.5. It has no significance or no meaning at all. So to overcome this problem, we are going to use the term called as mod psi square. So according to Max Born approximation, 
the concept of probability density is more meaningful rather than simply using psi right so thereby according to max born we can say probability of find the particle p is given by mod psi square which is given as psi into psi star where psi star happens to be the complex conjugate of psi means the mirror image of psi that's all okay therefore in this particular equation mod psi square the both the possibilities are taken care of positive values as well as negative values and that has been brought to a positive value in total by providing the mod symbol that is mod psi square right so therefore you can say that the probability of finding the particle within a given enclosure in a given chamber by using the concept called as normalization condition according to the normalization condition it is triple integral of mod psi square dx dy dz is equal to 1 indicating that probability of finding the particle within a volume dx dy dz is always be equal to 100% so where the term dx dy dz happens to be the volume of the given chamber right so thereby how much amount of effort you are supposed to give in order to find the particle position in a given chamber it all depends upon the volume dx dy dz that is the volume if it is small enough then less effort is sufficient to catch hold the particle or find the particle if it is wider enough it becomes slightly difficult so probability will be there of course at 100% anyway but how much amount of work you have to do to locate the particle position it becomes so much high now let us discuss about this one of the important application of the schrodinger equation that is the particle in a potential well of infinite height the basic aim of this derivation is to find out what is the Uh, status of the particle inside the potential well of infinite one card one part which is the most probable state of the particle inside the potential well and also how does the energy levels or energy values appears for the given particle that is what we are going to discuss in detail therefore this uh, particular problem is identified as the bounded particle problem there is particle is said to be inside the potential well it is not supposed to go anywhere other than between the two walls of the potential it cannot go beyond it within the two walls of the potential it will remains okay so but however uh, the restriction is made on the particle such that the particle can move only along x direction between the limits 0 to l such that whenever the particle is made to reach one edge of the barrier either to x equal to l or to x equal to 0 it will be reflected back and forth therefore in total particle lies only within the potential well that too between the limits 0 to l so uh, whenever you consider the potential barrier of uh, infinite height it is it possess enormously highest amount of potential energy v equal to infinity for the potential as such now when you want to find out the potential energy of the given particle the particle when it is inside the potential well uh, it can possess only very negligible amount of potential energy compared to the barrier height therefore for all our practical considerations we can consider v equal to 0 the for the particle in the potential well but if the particle comes outside the potential well that is at uh, x less than 0 or at x greater than l in all those positions v can be infinity for the particle this is how you have to understand the concept first so that means if the particle is within the limit 0 to l its potential energy is taken as zero but if it is less than x equal to 0 and less than 
x equal to l i mean greater than x equal to l then in both the cases its potential energy will be infinity now i will uh, just uh, take the basic data so uh, with the condition acting on the particle that is the constraint acting on the particle is zero less than x less than l that is i can find the particle position within the potential level at x greater than zero and x less than that of l between zero to l only it is possible okay so uh, whenever it reaches one edge of the bar one wall of the barrier it cannot stay there it should be reflected back okay that's shown in that particular diagram now you uh, go for the various potential energy calculations so first condition is v equal to zero for zero less than x less than l v equal to infinity for x less than or equal to zero and x greater than or equal to l that's what, what i have shown in the diagram so now take the chances of finding the particle so what happens you see bam i am uh, finding that particle cannot be outside the potential well it should always be within the barrier between the limit 0 to l therefore wherever you find out x greater less than or equal to 0 or x greater than or equal to l always the wave function psi is equal to 0 there is no chance of finding the particle beyond that particular uh, limits of 0 to l in fact that's why psi equal to 0 in that case now, according to Schrodinger wave equation, we have d square psi by dx square plus 8 pi square m into e minus p by h square psi equal to 0. I am using one dimensional wave equation here because we have the movement of the particle within the potential well takes place only along x direction, that is one dimensional motion. Therefore, straight away you can make use of one dimensional Schrodinger wave equation. So, in that case, already we have seen the potential energy of the particle is negligibly small, it is taken as zero when it is inside the potential well. Thereby, I can replace, uh, I can modify the equation in this particular fashion. So, then I will consider this term 8 pi square Me by h square as one constant called as k square. There is one arbitrarily chosen constant, okay. So, you can use any other uh, uh, letter also, it doesn't matter, but this uh, term is required. Where k square is nothing but 8 pi square me by h square. That is called as equation number 2. Now, you can observe uh, the equation 1 is of uh, second order differential. So, therefore, I can write a trivial solution for that as psi is equal to a sin kx plus b cos kx, where a and b are some constants we have chosen and we want to express the value of a and b in terms of barrier constant. That is the barrier constant is nothing but the width of the potential well, nothing but capital L. That is the only known parameter before us. Okay. Therefore, we have to rewrite this uh, constants A and B in terms of this known parameter by applying the boundary conditions acting on the particle. Okay. For this purpose, we shall dis discuss about two important conditions. That is, in the first case, we have x equal to 0. That is, I am considering one extreme left edge of the potential value. So, at that position, you know, so, we can find the position of the particle within the barrier anywhere at x greater than 0 and x less than L. Okay. But at x equal to 0 or at x equal to L, always particle never exists. Therefore, we can consider this psi is equal to 0 at that stage. Substituting this condition in the equation for psi now, so I will see that we zero will be equal to a sin kx is x is zero this term becomes zero plus we have put x equal to zero it becomes one therefore b will be the value only remains 
So we can write B is equal to 0 for that. So we can modify this equation for psi now, psi equal to S and Kx, right? So one uh, constant B, whatever we are using for the uh, trivial solution has no significance rather, we can neglect it. Therefore, we can write the only equation for psi as equal to A sin Kx. Go for a second possibility now, at x equal to L. That is a extreme right edge of the barrier we are considering. So in that case also, the probability is a wave function psi becomes equal to zero. Therefore, if you substitute it to the equation psi equal to A sin Kx, it becomes zero is equal to A sin Kl. So this equation says that either A can be equal to zero or sin Kl equal to zero, two possibilities. But when you put A equal to zero, so remember already B is zero in your previous uh, analysis. So if, I, if now a becomes zero, if I take a equal to zero, then it shows psi equal to zero always. We are not saying that the particle is not there in the inside the potential barrier. It is not available at the two edges of the barrier or the two walls of the barrier, particle never remains. That is the concept you have to remember now. Therefore, we cannot take a equal to zero, but only the other chance should be sin kl will be zero. This suggests that kl can be either zero or pi or two pi, etc. And in general, kl is equal to n pi. Okay. So therefore, k becomes equal to n pi by l now. Or if you take the square of that, k square is n square pi square by l square. We shall call it equation number four, where n is equal to one, two, three, so on. That is the calculation of n equal to 0 is uh, forbidden. That is why the lowest calculations we have to take it as n equal to 1, 2, 3, so on. So from these two equations, from equations 2 and 4, we can equate them because k square is 8 pi square mu by a square according to equation 2 and according to equation 4, we have k square is n square pi square by l square. If I equate both of them, we can find out an equation for energy E as equal to n square h square upon 8 m l square. This is one of the most important uh, equation which uh, provides a lot of information to us such that the energy values are said to be quantized for a bounded particle. Okay. So, where in this particular equation, you know, h square is a constant factor, mass of the given particle is constant and width of the bear is also constant. Only variable must be n value e proportional to n square. So, on substituting a value of n equal to 1, 2, 3, so on, it is possible for us to generate some set of energy values now, e1, e2, e3, so on, that looks like this. So for n equal to 1, I'm going to get E1 is equal to H square by 8 ml square is the lowest possible energy or zero point energy for the given particle. And it is also identified as the ground state energy. Then for n is equal to 2, E2 is equal to, so n value is 2 now, it is 4 H square by 8 ml square, which is called as the first excited energy. And we have n equal to 3, we have E3 is equal to 9 H square by 8 ml square is the second excited energy and so on. So thereby, you are finding that the energy values are quantized means discrete. That means you have got energy state E1. Then very next to the value will be any E2 value. Next will be E3. In between E1 and E2 or E2 and E3, no energy state slice. This is the meaning of the differentiation or the discontinuation in the energy value and that is called as quantization of energy. So concept of quantization of energy, whatever being put forward by Max Planck in the analysis of the black body spectrum that has been upheld 
in the uh, given problem also wherein for a bounded particle the behavior is entirely different where it can possess only specific set of energy values that is called quantization of energy so uh, in this regard say for example if you go back to the equation equal to n square s square by 8 ml square suppose if i put n equal to 1.1 .1, you get some value for energy if you put n equal to 1.2 some other value are going to get but all these energies are not acceptable okay so only specific energy states are permitted and these permitted energy values are called as energy eigen values okay so these energy eigen values are only be permitted for the energy values of the given particle inside a potential well so now the our work is uh, quite uh, reduced in fact because we are searching the particle position anywhere inside the potential well instead of doing that you can say particle can be either at the state given if it is not from the state e1 you can find the particle in the state e2 if it is not there go to the state number e3 so on that means uh, there is a uh, perfect demarcation for the particle position where there is an energy state wherever the energy state is present in that energy state only we can find the location of the particle so therefore uh, the probability of finding the particle is uh, uh, to be worked out now that is by that is possible by uh, finding the constant a okay so as per our previous uh, calculation you know psi is equal to a sin kx or i can write psi is equal to a sin so in place of k i can as n pi by l it is nothing but n by x by l totally okay so uh, as per the normalization condition acting on the particle you know the general condition triple integral of mod psi square dx divided z equal to 1 so if you rewrite this uh, uh, condition to the required problem we can write the single integral 0 to l mod psi square dx equal to 1 because you know the particle is moving only along x direction that too within the limit 0 to l so this is the modified equation for the current uh, situation so thereby i can write integral 0 to l so you can rewrite this uh, psi in terms of psi square now a square sin square n pi x by l into dx equal to 1 or rewrite this sin square theta in terms of 1 minus cos 2 theta divided by 2 so you'll get the second uh, modification here or on integration you will find that a square by 2 where x is the first integral the uh, integral of uh, x dx is x is the limit 0 to l minus of the sine 2 pi x etc 0 to l is equal to 1. Now substitute the limits of integration you will see that a is equal to square root of root I mean square root of 2 divided by l or now I can put the value for our final solution for the value of psi psi will be equal to square root of root 2 by l sine n pi x by l. Again in this equation also root 2 by l is one constant parameter and you can further rewrite the situations such that psi is also a function of the value of n so on substituting n equal to i'll get one uh, solution called as psi 1 on substituting n equal to 2 i'll get second solution n equal to 3 third solution so on therefore i can write now psi 1 is equal to root 2 by l sine pi x by l and psi 2 is equal to root 2 by l sine 2 pi x by l like that psi 3 also okay so this shows that uh, for every energy state e1 e2 e3 so on there is a specific probability of finding the particle psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 so on so these specific probability of the particle is identified as the eigen function therefore you can say for every eigenvalue e1 e2 e3 there's a specific probability of finding the particle psi1 psi2 psi3 and these are called as eigenfunctions okay 
Now, among these uh, various values of uh, psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, so on, which is the most probable state of the particle that we have to assess? For that purpose, I will draw the graph at this stage. So, where I am having the width of the barrier is 0 to L, with the, with the L is the width of the barrier. So, middle of the barrier must be L by 2. Is it right? I will calculate, I will take up, go back to this equation now. I will now divide the entire barrier into various parts. So, leftmost uh, position is L equal to, I mean, 0 is the position. Then the next one will be L by 4, one-fourth of the barrier. Center will be half wave portion, is L by 2. Next, we are having 3L by 4 and finally the L by. Therefore, four different subdivisions which we are doing. Now, in that case, so substitute x equal to 0 now. You will get psi 1 is equal to 0. Okay. That gives you one particular point somewhere here at the edge of the barrier. Similarly, when I put x equal to L by 4, so you are finding that this L will cancel out. It becomes sine pi by 4 for a given root 2 by L. So, you will have some value of psi 1 you are going to get there. That represents a point somewhere here. Like that, go for x equal to L by 2. So, again, you will get sine pi by 2, which is the maximum value you are going to get. Nothing but the peak value somewhere here. Like that, when you go for 3 pi by 4, so you get some value. Likewise, finally, at x equal to L, once again, sine pi, which is 0, you are going to get like this. So, this is, if you join all those points, it represents a curve of this particular nature. You can also uh, continue your studies to psi 2 also in the same way. It represents or this defines a curve of this nature, like that for n equal to 3, the, this type of nature. Now, but from this uh, type of uh, graph, it is difficult for us to analyze in total. Therefore, we are going to uh, discuss about the concept of probability density mod psi square. So, in the mod, whatever the psi value I got, find a square of that. So, you are going to find that this particular uh, graph appears to be like this. Whatever the negative uh, values you are observing here will be shifted to the positive side with a elevation in total like this. It is easy for us to identify which is the most probable state of the particle. According to this particular graph, observe at n equal to 1 the ground state, the highest chance of finding the particle is available, where all over the width of the barrier, there is a uh, finite chance of uh, particle occurrence in total, that the highest degree of particle to be inside the potential values lies with the ground state n equal to 1. With the increase in the value of n, as the n value goes on increases, you see, at the center of the potential well, no chance of finding the particle. Only we can see on the either side of the well, 0 to L by 2, as well as L by 2 to L in total, we can find the particle. But at L by 2, no chance. Likewise, if you go for n equal to 3, there are two more zeros here. Like this, can, as the value of n goes on increases, you are finding that the probability of particle occurrence will also gets reduced. That's why the given system, given analysis has clearly shown that every system in this universe always tries to occupy the ground state preferably, which is the lowest energy state. So, but all excited states are less preferable for the particle occurrence. Okay. This is what the uh, importance of uh, the analysis in total and Schrodinger equation has given us the correct picture of uh, uh, position of the particle inside a potential. Okay.